G'day guys, welcome back to Pittsburgh Steelers Syndicate. It is Victory Monday and I'm recording this on my my Sunday. No, sorry, my Monday, my Monday. So tomorrow for me, it's Victory Tuesday, but it doesn't matter. It is Victory Monday for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Steeler Nation. First of all, big shout out to Mitch Trubisky and Chase Claypool, two players who I've been, you know, really putting a lot of flack on. I'm still not a big Trubisky guy. I'm not a big fan of his play, and I'm not a big fan of Chase Claypool's play. However, today they proved me wrong and other Steeler fans wrong of their ability. They played fantastic. They came in clutch. Those two together ran down the field, got first downs, a big third and 17 to extend the drive and to push on and to win the game. But today's video is not about Chase Claypool, and who, in my opinion, was the MVP, I think, of the game. Or it wasn't about, it's not going to be about Trubisky, right? Kenny Pickett right now, as I'm recording, I've heard no news about Kenny Pickett. So hopefully, over the next few days, we hear about Kenny Pickett. However, today's video is about Coach Tomlin. And Mike Tomlin, he's, he needs to deserve some respect. Now, I've been hearing this fire Coach Tomlin uh, narrative for the past five years. Right, Every single time we lose, it doesn't matter what team we lose to, there's going to be pressure on Tomlin. The fire Tomlin crowd comes out and says, fire Tomlin, he sucks, he stinks, he can't win a playoff game. You know, all that, all those kind of things, things of that nature. Those things have been said all the time, right? And to some degree, I agree, I agree there needs to be a lot of pressure on Tomlin for him to do better. But I do not agree in one bit that you go and fire him. Because he, when you think about it, in reality, he's never had a losing season. Why would you fire someone, a coach, that's never had a losing season? Other teams around the league would absolutely kill for Mike Tomlin. The minute he walked off, he would walk away from Pittsburgh, another team would ring him up in a heartbeat and say, hey, mate, can you come over and coach a team? Carolina, Atlanta, anyone like that would ring up Coach Tomlin and say, can you coach our team? Like, dead set, that would happen. But it's funny, guys. The Fire Tomlin crowd goes quiet. Every single time a win happens, the Fire Tomlin crowd goes quiet. Now, when I see the Steelers lose, I can, to a certain degree, put a bit of blame on the coaches like I have with Matt Canada, Terrell Austin, and Tomlin last week. I was putting some blame on the coaches. I wasn't saying fire, fire Mike Tomlin. I was saying fire Canada. I still think Canada is not the best offensive coordinator in the league. I'm not a big fan of his play or his style, right? But he also played better. But soon as we lose, the Tom one fire Tom one crowd comes out. Now we didn't win. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we didn't lose yesterday. It was the Steelers versus Bucks. The Bucks were meant to beat us by a mile, a country mile. They were meant to slaughter us yesterday. That didn't happen. It didn't happen. So where is the respect? That's what I ask. Where is Coach Tomlin's respect? So it's really easy to put flack on the guy when he's losing and he does lose the playoff games. But the minute he wins a the game, there is nothing being said. The Coach Tomlin crowd goes quiet. I want to bring up something that I, that I brought up on my page, Still Nation Australia, right? On the other one I run. The Steelers secondary for Sunday was, was listed as this. James Pierre, Josh Jackson, Arthur Millette, Quincy Wilson, Terrell Edmonds, Trey Norwood, Elijah Riley, Miles Killebrew. Tomlin won with that secondary. He had the team ready. And you still get no respect for the guy. He's been to two Super Bowls and won one. He's won a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay as well. How does he hold no respect? He's two games away. The Steelers are two and four. Yes, we won, we lost four in a row. But the Steelers are two and four with a chance, chance to go 500 before the bye. They're still in this. And yet, Coach Tomlin deserves no respect. It blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. Now, a lot of fans will still be out there saying, well, I still don't believe in Coach Tomlin. And, you know, maybe that maybe that's okay. Because even in a win, I don't believe in Matt Canada. I think they need to change off of the coordinator. But it seems like today they can get away with it just enough to where if Kenny Pickett is healthy, we have a chance to win. But also, with, with our backup, Trubisky, he found a way to win. Coach Tomlin had these players ready. 
He always has these players ready on the big stage. Every single time. When they're counted out, Coach Tomlin's players rise up and fight for victory. I'm just saying, it's just crazy to me, man. It's crazy. You're so easy to count him out. To count him out when he's losing, when he's down, and you want to kick him and say, fire Tomlin, he's the worst coach in history. And the minute he goes and beats the Tom Brady Bucks, Tom Brady's a really good quarterback. He's won, what, seven Super Bowls or six? or He's won how many? Seven Super Bowls? He's won a ton of them. A ton. Seven out of ten or something like that. I don't even know what he's won. Tom Brady is the all-time greatest quarterback. And Mike Tomlin out-schemed him, out-coached, out-coached him, and won the, won the game with backup players. No Fryer move, no DeMarvin Leal. No one liked that. Makes no sense. Makes no sense that if you're if you're so against Coach Tom one and you want to fire him, you should be riding it every single time. Every single time. And I'll leave you with this analogy because I, I really don't think it's fair. For people who support Coach Tom one, like myself, right? I support Coach Tom one and I get ridiculed when we're losing. And I say, why would you support this guy? He sucks. He's the worst. He's terrible. I get ridiculed. And 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 talk down to for that, right? But it's not really fair, is it? Because when I support Coach Tomlin like that, you go through the adversity, you go through the losses. Because I know what he can do with his team. This team can play good. But here's the, here's the thing: the Coach Tomlin supporters are going to win either way. On one side, when they say fire Coach Tomlin and they want the team to tank for the first overall pick, which doesn't work out anyway. So you want the team to tank for the first overall pick. You say, fire Coach Tomlin. Then, then, for instance, if the Steelers lose, then you win. You get what you wish for. The team goes 3-14. and 14. Tomlin's the worst coach. And we had a losing season. And now we're drafting in the top five. You get that. However, here's the point I want to make. On the other side, you will still yell out, Coach Tomlin uh, needs to be fired or fire Coach Tomlin. And what if they go to the playoffs and start to go on a run? They go on the playoffs, they start to go on a run and have a chance to go win a Super Bowl. You win either way because you're a fan of the team and you want to fire Coach Tomlin. So what do you want? Do you want to say fire Coach Tomlin and see you next year? Come back. Maybe leave the team. Maybe say goodbye to the Pittsburgh Steelers and come back when we get a new coach in 2026, maybe. I don't understand how you can put that much energy into hating someone for so long. You would hate them for five, maybe six, seven years, saying he's a real bad coach, and you would continue to watch the game over and over and over. Because other teams and other fan bases around the league support and see what Coach Tomlin can do with his players. And yesterday's game showed that. The Steelers went on to beat the Bucks 20-18. to 18. Because they believe in Coach Tomlin. And they've got to ride this thing out. They've got to ride it out. Thanks, guys, for listening to myself on Pittsburgh Steelers Syndicate. If you like the content, hit that sub, hit that like. 